How's it going? Adam Drake here, and today I have a quick video that is going to be a tip to help you get lower ride height in the rear of your MBX-8R or MBX-8R Eco Buggy. So depending on the rear shock location and also rear hub position, um, you may or may not experience the problem of trying to get your ride height to 26 millimeters or even lower in some conditions. It can be really difficult if you're using inside hole in the rear arm and also if you're using the upper outer hinge pin position in the rear hub or lowering the hub down. So it's a really quick, easy fix. Um, you've maybe seen where I've posted a few times, um, just mentioning that you need to cut three millimeters off your, uh, your shock end. So I'm gonna show you kind of a quick, easy way to do that. But if you are running outside hole in the rear arm or you're running the hub up or the lower position in the rear hub, you can run the standard link shock end and it should be pretty easy to achieve the proper ride height. The other nice thing with cutting the shock end is when you go to the inside hole in the rear arm, you're reducing the amount of up travel you have. So now by cutting the shock end, you're gaining up travel, which is gonna help in bumpy conditions and is kind of back to how the car should be um, if you were to run that inside hole. So you change the camera angle and I'll show you how I measure and cut the shock ends and also show you on a shock basically what it's doing um, as a little bit of a closer look. Okay, so here we have a shock end that has been cut, that is installed on the shock, and then a shock end that is stock. So you can see the one on this side closest to my thumb. This area here is a little bit taller. So what happens is the spring cup slides down the shock end and bottoms out. Now. If you cut the shock end, this spring cup can then slide down farther, which is essentially going to just shift the spring down farther, which is going to give you more adjustment or room for adjustment here at the top. So again, it depends on the rest of your setup in most, uh, most settings or like what the kit setup is it's pretty easy to get the proper ride height, but if you're using a setup similar to what like Rhonda, Ryan, or myself use, which uses inside hole in the rear arm and also drops the hub down, both going to inside hole in the arm and also dropping the hub down is gonna limit the amount of up travel and also make it harder to achieve the proper ride height. So cutting the shock end is gonna give you back some of the up travel and it's also um, again going to give you more range of adjustment for setting your ride height. So you can just take your digital calipers, set it to three millimeters, lock that down and then I'll just go ahead and kind of scribe the shock end here on both sides. Because you're wanting to make sure that, that you, when you do a set, you cut them as equal as possible because otherwise, if these, if one's cut two mil, or three millimeters and one's cut two and a half, that means up here, you're gonna be a half a millimeter off with your preload. Also be really careful using an X-Acto. It's much easier if you take a brand new X-Acto. Um, it may even be better if you use like more of like a carpet knife so you have a little bit more leverage. But I always start out just by finding that scribe and then I'll just take the X-Acto and just kind of, I'm not trying to like actually cut all the way through yet I'm just trying to score and scribe a line all the way around um, before I actually try to 
to cut all the way through. And then the other thing is, is even if you cut this and it's a little bit off or a little bit crooked, you can always take a file and um, clean it up a little bit. Um, might not even be a bad idea just to cut like two millimeters off and then just kind of sand at the, the additional one millimeter. Um, but for me, this is how I always do it. I just, again, scribe it and then I'll kind of slowly apply pressure, work the knife into the end. And again, I'm not trying to like force it or go all the way through at once. I'm trying to be really careful not to cut myself at the same time. So now that I have it scribed pretty much all the way around, I'll now try to apply a little more force. Just keep doing the same thing. Just you're trying to just take and basically make little cuts at a time and just take your time. Try to rush it, you end up not cutting it quite as, as straight. You could also always use a Dremel cutoff wheel. I just always kind of take my time and Use the exacto. Now I'm getting pretty close to being through. Part of it. And then there's the rest of it. And again, if you kind of take your time, easier way around, the cut usually ends up being pretty straight. You can always go back, clean it up just a little bit you have to with the exacto. Now to check it, you take the stock one, measure what that length is, 22 millimeters. A little bit of a flashing there. So twenty-two millimeters. So now this should be nineteen. We're at 18.6, so I cut 3.4 millimeters, which is fine as long as you then match and do the same with the other side. So usually we, we cut between two and a half and three millimeters off. You don't want to go any more than really three millimeters, maybe three and a half, because then you start to run into um, having less shock shaft engagement into um, the actual shock end. Now, when I then thread on the shock end, always make sure that the ball is in the shock end before you thread it onto the shock shaft. Otherwise, it's really easy to thread the shaft um, too far into the end, and then you won't, when you snap the ball in, it'll be bound up. So if you put the ball in first, thread the shock end on all the way, as it starts to get more tension, you want to kind of slow down and be careful and you'll just slowly tighten the end until the ball has a little bit of resistance or starts to get bound up. And then I back it off a half a turn. And again, you can measure from the end of the shock body to the shock end. I have 41 and a half millimeters and you're just wanting to make sure 
from right to left, that number is the same. That way, if the gap is the same there, then when you set your collars at the top from left to right, you'll want to have the same gap as well, which will tell you you have equal spring tension from left to right.